I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're exploring the transformative path to spiritual enlightenment with an amazing author. His name is Raphael de Mohan, and he has written a powerful book. It is called Journey Towards Soul Consciousness. This profound book bridges spirituality, psychology, and esoteric philosophy, offering deep insights and practical exercises for lasting spiritual growth. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank the team at Atticus Publishing for helping us put him in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support authors like him by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing his amazing book. The links are below this interview. Raphael, great to see you here today on Spotlight. Thank you very much, Luke, and, and, and thank you for, for bringing me here on the Spotlight Network TV. I'm appreciative of that. Well, it's we're great. appreciative of your time. Loved your book. Love having you here on the show to talk more about it. What inspired you to write this book? And tell me how it builds upon the work you did with your late husband, Elias. Well, uh, the, the work is based on his esoteric system of vibrational sound and color. But also, I combine that with my many, uh, I have many years been in different spiritual groups, as well as psychology uh, groups. And I have observed that though people were well-meaning and wanting to develop, there were some basic um, psychological uh, issues they never really knew anything about. Mm. And, and that uh, that blocked some of their uh, development. Mm. So uh, that's why I try to put it into uh, words in the book. Uh, so it's based on my own experience in these groups, but also uh, based on my own therapy in different contexts, spiritual psychology, uh, psychotherapy, et cetera. So that is all uh, uh, come together uh, more or less in this uh, book. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I love the integration of the different disciplines. I think that's what makes this work unique. How do you define soul consciousness? What is it? Well, that is a tricky uh, uh, question. Uh, I do not define soul in the book mm -hmm. because it's all about the journey and not the end. There is actually no end as, as I see it. But, you know, I have never met anybody who could define souls for me that would make sense. Mm -hmm. And if someone could do that, it would be an intellectual knowledge. I want people to experience in themselves what it is. And that's exactly. why I call it the journey towards soul consciousness. I think that's great because people can give a description of it. They can tell you what they think it is or tell you what they experienced, but your yes. own experience is yes. quite unique, just like yes. you're unique. So my yes. soul is different than your soul. My connection to it is different than yours. I think that is very, very wise that you took that tactic, of course. Tell me about some of the practical exercises from the book that readers can begin using to engage their ego patterns and defense mechanisms. Well, actually, the, the book has three main subjects. The, the, the first I, I deal with is the, the psychological aspects focused on defense mechanisms. And that is a, a really knowing about them in yourself is actually the stepping stones to expanding your self-knowledge, your self-experience knowledge, and that will expand your consciousness too, which is uh, helpful in the spiritual uh, uh, development. So, and um, the second part of, of the book uh, is, is more about the existential level of being a human being. Uh, and the third is about Elias's, um, Elias de Mohan's uh, 12-ray system. Um, in the uh, part of the psychology in the book, I uh, 
expand the concept of grounding mm -hmm. because uh, you know the, the word grounding is used in common language you, you know it's just about putting your feet on the ground but it's a lot more and i haven't met really any um, deeper explanations so i put three actually four forms of grounding in the book mm. and the first is of course the the the, the physical etheric the the second is an emotional grounding to be connected to even the deepest layers of your emotions and are able to express them and use them constructively and the third grounding form of grounding er, is is a mental grounding mm -hmm. and i see the mental it its function is to uh, uh, contain the physical and emotional grounding. So in Western countries, the mental is uh, is uh, favorized. Everything mm -hmm. has to be mental, and that. But the function, as I see it, should contain and support the emotional development and the physical mm -hmm. etheric development. So it's an integrating faculty mm. that's a very important uh, step and as soon as you grow and deepen those forms of grounding what i call soul grounding comes into the pictures because then energies from the soul can start going through all your three uh, uh, departments mm -hmm. and and there you can actually start to do soul work or soul energy work wonderful wonderful so so that is that is one part then mm -hmm. go ahead or sorry then there, of course there is um uh, i have given what i call the padma meditation which actually has or uh, uh, it's described in the book so you can just uh, uh, read the instructions and do it yourself Mm. And of course, it's with um, visualizing white light and it's using a sound also to guide the energy up through your body. Mm. And there are four levels, or actually there is five, but I think I described four levels of the Padma meditation. Mm. So that is some of the exercises that's in the book. Wonderful, wonderful. It's great practical exercises for people on their uh, yeah. journey, no doubt. Um, tell me a little bit about the 12 ray vibrational sound and color system that was developed by Elias de Mohan uh, yeah. and how it plays a role in this journey. Yeah, well, this this is actually, uh, maybe it's a, it's a system that's for the future mm -hmm. or because it, it doesn't have any structure. You have to experiment with you know 12 ray one ray is one color mm -hmm. and it's supported by five syllable sounds and uh, he has described some qualities to each ray color uh, both harmonious uh, qualities and resistant qualities and you that's like keywords you can go in and, and see what what do I want? What what is what can I feel is right for me? And then I can take that keyword and look inwards while I'm doing these exercises. So that is uh, uh, one way of uh, doing this uh, very open system. Actually, because you you have to find your own method to do it. Right. Exactly. And that's that's it. that is one of my purposes also with the book that I. I want to people to empower themselves to become self-reliant, mm -hmm. self-independent, in so they can create their own system instead of fitting into other people's boxes. Exactly. Everybody's <laughs> puzzle pieces together differently. Yes. Uh, that's something a wise man told me one time, and it's very, very true. So we have to figure out our own puzzles. We have to figure out our own path. We have to create our own journeys, no doubt. What advice uh, would you have for readers who are just beginning their spiritual journey and might be a little 
overwhelmed by the process? Oh, oh, yeah. Well, there are a lot of books. There are a lot of systems. And, you know, just go for what you feel is uh, you are attracted to. Try it out. Taste it. But take what you use. Don't try to fit into a box because that that's often when you are not self-confident enough. You're trying to imitate others and be like others. Be yourself. Um, I have a saying here that says, if you can be present in yourself in the moment, you can do anything. Mm. But if very, you can't, you can't make it anywhere. Yeah. So most important, be in yourself, be present in the moment, in the now. That's very important. We have all the tools. We just know need to know how to access them. And that answer is comes from within. Actually, it comes yes. only from within, you know. Yes. And you know, there is a crossword, a cross uh, crossroads. A crossing, yeah, crossroad yes. between what we want and what we actually need. Exactly. And what we think we want and what we actually need are often like this and not like this. Yeah, and that yeah. that takes a lot of introspection. Exactly, exactly. To, to yeah, find the difference there. If we got everything we wanted in life, we might not be very happy at all. In fact, all you have to do is look at the people who have everything they wanted in life, and many of those things are material, and they're among the most miserable people in the world. Yes. So, you know, I think it was Jim Carrey said this. Uh, okay. He said, "I wish." everybody could be rich and famous yes. so they could realize that's not the answer to the problem. You know, my first teacher, he was an East Indian meditation teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, Ram Chandra, he's called, but he's, he's not here anymore. But he was once asked the question, who is the happiest person in the world? Very tricky question. And he answered quite promptly the one who is happy under all circumstances exactly exactly in fact i often say a happy person is happy despite their circumstances not because of their circumstances yes. you can take a happy person and put him in prison he'll yes. still find a way to be happy yes because his set point is happiness his yes. His uh, perspective is happiness. His perspective is optimism. This has been a great conversation, Raphael. I truly enjoyed it. I think it's given great insight to our listeners at home and to the readers of your book as well. The name of the book is called Journey Towards Soul Consciousness. It is a profound book that bridges spirituality, psychology, philosophy, and offers deep insights as well as practical insights and exercises for lasting spiritual growth. Raphael, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you very much to you too. Thank I you. I appreciate your time. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford thanking you for your time this time until next time on Spotlight.